Right, hello, and welcome to Fox Galactica. Here we are at Elite Dangerous. So we've had a few streams with Star Citizen, and Star Citizen I am really, really new at, so we're taking it nice and slowly, because that's really the only way you can take Star Citizen. And I thought we'd do a little bit of a comparison with Elite Dangerous, which I'm not new at. Now, I've played Elite Dangerous for quite a few years now. Um, Elite Dangerous has gone through a, a lot of changes recently, uh, specifically in the last uh, year and the last few months. So, uh, basically, um, Elite Dangerous, uh, you can play it on PC, you can play it on console. But now there's three versions of Elite Dangerous, uh, and only two of them are available on console. So you've got the two versions of Elite Dangerous are Elite Dangerous, which is the normal one, which is known as Elite Dangerous Live. And what happens there is you can fly around, you can land on non-atmospheric planets, you can get into vehicles and drive around, and it's not a problem, it's pretty good. Um, you've got the usual elite gameplay loops of combat, trading, mining, transporting, all those sort of things. Uh, then you have Elite Dangerous Legacy. Now, Legacy is a completely separate server and does not receive the updates. So at the moment, the big update is that there's a big war going on with uh, the humans and the aliens. And the aliens are attacking various systems and star uh, space stations. And I imagine that in the next few weeks, um, somebody is going to make um, a really good weapon appear, which really is super effective on the alien craft. There are some already, but a new one, which enables humans to sort of start to claw back, and then the community will they'll grind, get these weapons added to their ships, and then they'll start to take it back, and eventually they'll repel the aliens enough that another season will start etc 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 that's that's you know you don't need to be some sort of massive clairvoyant to um to realize that's how the game's going to go in the next few months um but that is what's happening at the moment so elite dangerous legacy won't have that it'll just be fly around do your thing and that's fine it's fine it means all the systems are open uh, there's no threats from thargoids incursions etc uh, elite dangerous live that is what you get. Uh, now, Odyssey is DLC. Odyssey is not available on console. So if you want to do the uh, Odyssey stuff, now Odyssey is basically the walk around on foot, first person, which now includes new gameplay loops with walking around space stations, getting missions from space stations uh, from all the people that are inside, and being able to walk around as well settlements on planets and there's a whole new set of gameplay experiences for that with sabotage um, salvage delivering stuff collecting stuff um, first person combat lots of guns lots of different suits lots of different tools to use um, so it's opened up a whole new sort of set of gameplay threads um, and we're going to have a look at that basically we're going to have a look at some of the stuff in odyssey we'll do um a couple of flying missions we'll show you what's available if you just want to do elite dangerous without the odyssey so you just want to do the flying stuff we'll have a look at um some missions on foot if you do want to do the um on foot stuff and unlike star citizen i can actually do these now i'm so i'm quite new to odyssey i've spent a few days doing very uh, a bit of a recce on some of the odyssey foot missions um and i've been able now to stop getting killed by security guards so hopefully we'll we'll continue that today but anyway um differences between this and star citizen star citizen you can buy pretty much anything you want ships weapons using real money uh, so if you want the biggest ship in the game the best ship in the game you can just buy it uh, there's a lot of really good ships in star citizen the graphic design the ship design everything about the way that star citizen works very complicated um living universe but you can buy whatever you want i could i could join on day one and buy myself a, a thousand pound spaceship not a problem you haven't brought a mouse in of you no good so 
Um, on Elite, the only thing you can put your money into real money is um, cosmetic things for your craft. So paint jobs, um, fancy coloured engine trails or lasers or stuff like that. You can't buy ships with real money. You have to grind a bit. Hi Elgarf, good. Hopefully I'll hear you log in shortly. Um, yes, you can't buy real craft. You have to buy all of those with in-game stuff. Now I've got three ships currently. Here, Star Citizen, I've got one. Here I've got three. I've got them all docked at the same place. I'm at Bohm Terminal. Bohm Terminal is a big space station. Um, you can see a hologram of it to the left of my little mini in-game menu. And um, basically, the this, this terminal is really good for my ship because I can do some good delivery missions nice and quickly, earn quite a lot of money with them, and... Um, uh, it's just a nice base, basically. It's, it's not uh, at the moment. This system is not getting attacked, so um, we're in a pretty good place. But anyway, what I'll do first is I'll show you the three ships, and we'll start with um, the Sidewinder. So the Sidewinder is the ship you get as soon as you join the game. You're given a Sidewinder. Uh, looking, at, it's a very small ship, really small. Um, I'll give you some idea of how small in a moment. But um, this is. The interior of the Sidewinder. It's got really good visibility over the top. I can see through the glass. But as you can see, it's a single-seater uh, craft. Let's go outside and have a look at the craft on foot. So I am now in the docking bay. So we'll go around to the front, switch to keyboard and mouse, cat you can get any ideas of jumping on my laptop out of your little kitty head right now. So this is this is the docking bay and this is the sidewinder. So the sidewinder is small, you can see there as I mentioned it's got a, a space inside for one person and it is a small small ship but it's the ship you're given at the beginning so yeah you're not starting off with anything too big quite a nice shape you've got uh, the entry door at the back this blue thing in the middle that is how you board uh, spaceships but the side one is all right I mean it's, it's got very very small space for cargo um, you can put I think one passenger cabin in there so you can do some space tourism missions you can take somebody around the galaxy to see what they want to see and then they'll pay you at the end. Um, the one thing, well, the things that it doesn't have, doesn't have a lot of good weapons, doesn't have a lot of uh, jump range. So it's really just a, a short range sort of fighter or ship. You won't ex be exploring the galaxy with the Sidewinder. So let me just get back on board and we will go to... The next ship. So you've had a Sidewinder for a bit, and you decide that you've got some money, you've grinded a bit, you've got some money, you've done some missions, maybe you've done a lot of data transport missions, or you've done a little bit of bounty hunting, and you decide that you are going to um, treat yourself to a bigger ship. So, if I go to the shipyard at this space station, it has nine ships to buy, uh, we will have a look at my second ship, which is the Cobra Mark II. So it's going to show me a picture of it in a second. There it is. Uh, similar looking ship. Sidewinder you can see in the bottom right corner. It's a similar looking ship. Hi Melody, how's it going? A um, bit bigger, we'll, we'll change into that. So this is the interior for the Cobra. Now at the beginning it looks a little bit like the Sidewinder, but just a little bit more legroom. But if I pan to the right, you can see we've now got a second ship, a second seat, um, a few more displays on the inside. So I can have a crew member with me on this one. Um, but yes, so a bit bigger, but still fairly small. From the outside, we'll have a look at 
this when you do the um, when you do Odyssey for the first time you do a tutorial and the tutorial ends with you basically flying off in a Cobra as a passenger so we'll just come over here and come spin around so so the Cobra Mark 3 there's a Cobra Mark 4 but you, you won't be able to buy that that was only available to you if you were uh, if you pre-ordered Elite Dangerous before it came out so um, the the Cobra Mark 4 is no longer available and to be honest the Cobra Mark 3 is a much better ship but it looks a little bit like the um, the Sidewinder especially in profile but as you can see it's a lot bigger the entrance is at the front as we just discovered we come around to the back and it looks fairly similar in the way that there's a door on the back got these big thrusters uh, but we've got a lot more space for cargo a lot more space to put passengers in if we want to um, and we can also can we put a, a fighter in here I can't remember I'll have, a, I'll have a look in a second some of these ships you can actually put an additional small ship like the Sidewinder in it and have your if you hire a crew member they can um, when you, if you're in battles, you can get your your crew member to take this, the, the the ship you've got inside out and basically be your wingman and stuff like that. So do we have space for a fighter in this? Let's have a quick look. Oh. We don't have a fighter, but we do have a ground vehicle, the Scarab. Um, yeah, so I haven't got a space for a fighter, but I do have a little vehicle. So that is the Cobra. Now the Cobra cost. If I go back to Starport Services, the Cobra is three hundred and fifty thousand credits or thereabouts so it doesn't take long to grind enough in a in a sidewinder maybe two or three hours of doing a few deliveries maybe a bit of shooting and a bounty mission um kill some wanted people in space after about two or three hours of that you're going to have more than enough where you can upgrade to something like a cobra and a cobra is a lot of people's choice of second ship uh, i got a few ships after that but then i upgraded to my current ship um, which is the Anaconda. The Anaconda is one of the most popular ships. Uh, it's one of the biggest ships in the game. It's one of the most expensive ships in the game. Um, you can see there it's much longer. Um, so if we look around the inside of this, uh, you'll see there is a lot more room in the cabin on this one. I've got space for four people to sit. It's huge. What is interesting, it's a brand new ship. And there's loads of cables sort of sticking out everywhere. So um, the build quality of the ship on the inside is a bit iffy, but that's okay. If I change my cameras, that's how long it is. Um, we'll get, there we go. So you get a much better sense of how big the bridge is from the inside cameras. There's me in my fancy little spacesuit. And this is from the back. And then you've got this one on the dashboard looking in, basically. So you can see there, compared to the sidewinder, you can probably fit a sidewinder actually in that bridge. It's so much bigger. So let us, uh, we'll just disembark so you can see the size of it on the ground. Then we'll jump in and I'm going to do um, a delivery mission, which should net quite a bit of cash. Right, so there we go. This is the Anaconda. As you can see, uh, compared to the Sidewinder, which was really small, this is absolutely enormous. It is longer than a football pitch, basically. Uh, you can't even see the bridge from up here. None of this is, is where I sit. I have stacked it full of cargo uh, racks. I could fit um, a fighter on here. I could actually fit the sidewind when it goes in this this garage that I'm hovering over at the moment. So you do have a hangar on the ship. Now, it is 
it's one of the biggest ships in the game. It's one of the most expensive. I'll go through all the ships in a second. It does look much better today, isn't it, Mel? I think it was, um, I think it was OBS last time that was the problem. It was just when I restarted it, it was uh, a bit problematic. But uh, today it's much better. So yes, huge engines at the back. This has got an enormous jump range. Uh, it can carry phenomenal amounts of cargo. It has the largest facility for the biggest weapons. Um, it's not the most manoeuvrable in a dogfight, but um, it is really, I say, probably the most popular ship in the game. But they're massively expensive. I'll go through the list of ships. Now, the list of ships in Elite is much smaller than Star Citizen. There's um, a couple of manufacturers in Star Citizen who have more, sh more ships just for one model than Elite has as a game. So, we'll go back in we'll have a look at um, all the ships you can you can get you'll see there's a bit of a this this doesn't have all of them at the station but we will be able to show you all of them so I was really pleased to get the uh, anaconda it is seen by so many people as yeah Mahusiv exactly Elgoth it's seen as you know something to really aim for um, Money wise, I've got 97 million. I had 100 million last night, but then I, I bought that Cobra and, and really outfitted it with the top of the range of everything so um, that I could have it as a backup ship. So, the shipyard, they've only got nine ships here. Some shipyards have as few as five ships, and some have as many as about 18. But that's the side one. You start with that, that's free. Um, these ships are only 32,000 credits. Um, you get it for nothing. Everything on it is loaned to you. It's like a, a courtesy ship. Um, adder. We'll be seeing a little bit of the Adder today because the Adder is the default space taxi. When I start doing the on, on uh, foot missions, I want to do some drop offs and maybe some pickups. Might do. Might try a shooty mission. I'm really not very good at the shooty missions, um, so I'll have to see what sort of threat they pose to me. But Basically, if you're doing any of the drop-off missions or pick-up missions, um, you really want to use a taxi, not your own ship. So you'll use an adder. Somebody will cut. It's an Uber, basically. Space Uber. Um, Vipers are combat ships. Killback is um, a, a cargo ship. Uh, have a look at how much the... the, the see, from the Vipers, 437,000 credits. Killback is 3 million. So a bit of a jump. And then a massive jump from the Killback to the Type 9 Heavy which is very much a freighter, and that's 76 million. But the Anaconda um, cost me 146 million. You can trade in your ship. If you want to give up your ship and not buy um, a brand new one, you can trade in. And the ship I was using before had a trade-in value of about 90, 95 million dollars uh, credits. So I was able to, because I had about 80 million credits, I was able to upgrade my ship and then upgrade the Anaconda to get a few more better items in it so that's the anaconda that's the ship i use at the moment um right so these ships you can't buy here but we'll have a look at them anyway so the cobra um there it is yeah you can't have a fighter in it you can have a, a ground vehicle and you can have one extra thing the good thing about a cobra uh price three hundred forty nine thousand credits and it's a small landing pad um there's nothing worse than taking a delivery to uh, a land uh, to a settlement on a planet somewhere and finding they've only got small or medium pads and you're sitting there in a in a anaconda which is a large landing pad so you can't really land at the station um let's go what did i go from from the cobra i then went on to a vulture so this is a vulture 4.9 million credits it's really a combat ship you can put some cargo in it but it was mainly a combat ship. It's got very, very good armor, very good shields, and I used it for a little bit of cargo and bounty hunting missions. Um, so a nice little ship, 5 million credits, that got me by. After the Vulture, I went for this one, the Asp Explorer, 6.6 .6 million credits. Um, this is a very popular ship in the game. It's a bit like the Cobra, similar sort of shape, this has got a fantastic jump range in the engines. And you can upgrade them, obviously, very quickly. But you can, as its title suggests, it is good for long journeys. Now, there is 
a gameplay loop called Road to Riches, where you plot, you go to a website, I'll show you websites in a minute, because with the PC version, um, there's external websites that make your, your gameplay a lot easier. Um, it's not cheating, it's just information, basically, that helps you to plan where you're going. But the gameplay loop Road to Riches, basically you plot a multi-stop um, journey around a large part of the galaxy, and every time you, you jump into a system, you scan the system, it'll tell you how many bodies there are there, um, how many planets, and then you scan each and every planet, and all this does is it, it gathers you geographical data and after you've done this like 35 to 50 stop loop you can sell that data and you get a lot of money i think i got about 35 to 40 million and it took about seven or eight hours to do the whole loop but at the end of it i got 30 of million which isn't bad um in the anaconda i can do 30 million in about half an hour so for a ship that size also very good at combat that was good so i had the asp explorer and then I, I used that for ages until i had enough money for another one of the most popular ones in the game, the Python. Now, some people view this as the best all-round ship in the game. Uh, it's a good price, 56 million, or 57 really, if you look at it. Uh, plus, especially once you upgrade some of the items. Um, looks a bit like the Anaconda, but you sit at the front. It's not as big as the Anaconda, it's a medium pad but it does have capability for a lot of cargo or passenger missions. Really good um, hard points for good weapons. Fantastic in dogfighting, good shields. It does everything really well. So uh, lots of people like the Python. It took me, and this was my, my first main target, was to get a Python. I got the Python, again, did all my missions before I upgraded to the Anaconda. Now, Anaconda is not the most expensive in the game, there are two more expensive than the Anaconda. The first one is the Federal Corvette. Now, the Federal Corvette is that. It's basically a massive gunship. Um, it is best for combat. doesn't have a very good jump range. Mm, you can't really put too much cargo in it. It is there for one purpose, really. One person only. Uh, one, one purpose only. And that is to kill other ships. It is a, it, it's used by... Um, the, one of the armies or navies, what you want to call them, and it is their go-to ship. Um, I can't buy this because I would need... It's a, um, what is it, can I get a Federal Corvette? I'm not sure. Um, with some of the ships, you need to do certain number of missions for particular factions, and they'll give you a rank, like, you know, Sergeant, a Major, General, blah, 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 blah. And only after... Um, only after you've got to a certain level within that faction can you buy certain ships like the most expensive one in the game the imperial cutter so in order to do this you need to be doing um missions for uh the federation until you get to the rat certain rank but that ship does everything brilliantly cargo um fighting uh, passengers mining you name it this ship does everything um it's very very big large um, large landing pad and but the, the money 208 million why did jason's opinion on this game change so dramatically that's a good question um i don't really know to be honest i mean i i um i didn't really see many of the the elite streams on on the channel despite the fact i've been there for five years um i didn't really see that many of the elite streams um the elite streams are really good sort of friday nights when um we when we had it looked like we just had the fire sim one where you had people in the chat come and join um we had that with elite and we'd have other players joining for little mess arounds basically um why did it change so much i don't know i mean elite can be quite a grindy game if you want the big ships it's quite grindy and then when you get the big ships the game doesn't really change except you can make even more money but once you've got a ship like I've got, the Anaconda, there's nothing really I'm going to buy after the Anaconda. So it really is just a case of do missions you enjoy, grind loads of money, upgrade your ship as much as you can. But there seems to be like a limit to where you can go. Now, Jason has put a lot of hours into this. He's done over 600 hours. Um, so he does. he's obviously A, very good at the game, B, quite far into the game, and knows a lot about it. Why? He's just, he doesn't like space legs. 
I know he doesn't really like um, the Odyssey DLC. Um, I think he felt it was just a little bit too little too late. Um, I'm not sure if there were issues with gameplay mechanics being broken that weren't being fixed, uh, weren't being prioritised over others, but um, maybe he'll come in a bit later and we can ask him. But, um, yeah. So, um, all the ships we've got, it is what it is. So, if you are ship-based, so if you are only playing Elite Dangerous, um, either Live or Legacy, if you're not with the Odyssey DLC, um, what you what you have is very, very simple. So you land and at a, a, a space station and you have starport services. So starport services is where you choose what missions you're going to be doing. Now, if you are a trader, if you want to do trading, there's, if I go back, there's, there's different ranks to your gameplay. So you can see on the left of my panel there, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, the six used to be five, it was a new one, now exobiologist. That's because I am with, um, that's because I've got the Odyssey thing, more on that later. Um, but you have combat, um, explorer, trade, those are the three main game strands within Elite Dangerous. And then you also have CQC. Now, when you launch Elite Dangerous, you can go into, a bit like the Crucible on Destiny, you can just go into combat servers where all you do is, is fly around and, and try and kill you know, like death matches and stuff like that and if you do really well in that then your cqc rank will go up uh, i haven't even touched that not for one second uh, my combat rank is novice um i'm not great at combat i don't tend to go in for a lot of combat i do do some bounty missions but the combat there is very simple basically you find some wanted people flying around the planet then you wait for the police to come um they start them and then you finish them even if you just shoot them once um, you get the bounty once they blow up. So it's quite easy to, to get bounties without being drawn into lots of dogfighting. Explorer rank Pathfinder. That's not bad. That's about two-thirds of the way. The idea is that you build up your rank till you get to Elite. So that's like the aim of the game is to Elite everything. Um, Explorer rank. That, that rank came to me because of the uh, Road to Riches mission that I did. Um, trade rank Entrepreneur. Now I'm really close there to levelling up. Um, won't let me go left. Um, so I can't remember what's after entrepreneur. I think you've got tycoon, and then you have elite. So I'm, I'm not far from elite for trading. Trading is basically take stuff to someone, pick something up from someone, and bring it back, or go and source something and then bring that back to me. So that's trading, uh, and also um, buying, just tr trading off your own back without a mission buying commodities at one place and then selling them on hopefully for a profit at another place so those are the main game players those are the three um, gameplay ranks so you go to starport services and start starport services you can look at your commodities market you can look at what they are selling um, or you can sell whatever you've got in your hold uh, this one here is a refinery the economy's refinery so it uses some metals which are sort of meltable so things like silver lithium um, gold copper etc titanium uranium all those can can be melted and refined uh, also we've got some textiles bio waste that's poo basically so um yeah so you can you can if you're if you're pretty good you can study all the prices and keep tracks on what's going where and you can buy and hopefully sell at a profit um you have the shipyard, which is where you um, can buy a new ship. Um, also, uh, you can upgrade your ship uh, on outfitting here. Um, I've got hard points, which are where your weapons are based. So you can see them popping out of the, the main craft. Uh, utility mounts, things like countermeasures in battle. Uh, core internal, so that would be things like your light speed drive, your life support system, your power generator. Uh, optional internal, um, cargo hold, fighter bay, all that sort of malarkey, and then vehicle bays. If you've got a, f a fighter bay and a vehicle bay, you then go into vehicle bays to put things in them. So you can upgrade your stuff there. Uh, contacts, if you've got a bounty you want to claim, uh, you go to uh, Combat Bond. If you've got um, things like fines, you picked up a fine, maybe you've collided with another ship uh, while you're flying, um, maybe you've done a criminal thing, um, you've done a bit of criminal work and somebody's found you out with a scan. You might have a bounty on your head or you're wanted or whatever. You can pay it off by going there. If you use the black market, you can use that as well. Um, 
and then you've got universal card graphics this is where when you go to a new system you scan the system as i said earlier but you don't like road to riches you don't go and scan every single planet you just scan the system you find out how many planets are in them and that data um, can be sold to universal cartographics uh, as and they'll buy anything off you which is over 20 light years away now if you can see here i've got on here sell page so i'm going to be selling everything here except i think two things um for 142,000. so i, I make 142,000 just from yeah those two things are too close um i made 142,000 credits just from flying places doing a quick scan when i land before i then jump out and go somewhere under that you've got crew lounge so i don't have a fighter hangar but i could if i had a fighter hangar i could hire some crew um and the crew are listed at the bottom uh the better pilots for your fighter ship obviously cost more 150,000. they are ranked as expert they'll take 12 percent of all money you make on a mission and um yeah so it's, it's about balancing how much you want to pay them versus how much you want them to win their dogfights. I think really if you've got the money for it, um, you always want to hire experts, but I don't have that. Um, I can change my livery, I can do tiny individual things like just make sure my paint work is, is 100%. At the moment my ship, everything on it is 100%, so I don't need to visit that sort of stuff. Uh, but apart from all of that, you then have mission board. So if I go onto mission board, oh, passenger lounge, if I wanted to, if I had people who want to go on a on a holiday or to go on a sightseeing tour around the galaxy um let's have a look on personal transportation garfield stevens wants to visit experimental habitat and collect data io rich wants to visit clockwork rings and collect data basically you fly somewhere in the galaxy you find a a, a, a beacon you find a beacon scan the beacon and that gives them the data they need Ooh, I don't know about that, uh, Elgarth. I'm not sure why that's doing that. Anyway, at least we're still we're still pretty much okay. So, mission board. The main mission board has seven things. There are no Thargoid aliens in the system, so there's no Thargoid missions. Um, but we have combat missions, which typically are fly off and kill somebody. Generally, pirates. I don't do these missions, one, because I'm not very good at combat, and two, because you're always massively outgunned as soon as you get there. There's always the pirate, and then they've got about three or four friends with them. So you've got to take out one, you've got to take out four or five. Uh, freelance, these tend to be illegal black market stuff. So you've got to be careful when you get scanned coming into systems. Might earn you a fine. Operations... Uh, go and plant sensors somewhere, go and read sensors off something, go and knock out mega ship turrets as illegal missions so that another faction can go and then attack the mega ship. Um, a lot of these weapons are, as you can see, illegal. Uh, these missions are illegal. Uh, support is very simple. Support is um, give us money. So you can just give money to the causes to get more influence, because the more influence you have, the better pay they give you for their jobs. Um, the jobs I tend to look at the most are transportation jobs. So, uh, what have we got here? That's tempting. 11.8 million for Cryolite. Um, although, where's Cryolite going to be? Right, so now would be a really good time to look at websites to help you play the game. So it says here, source and return 516 units of cryolite. Now my hold takes 384 tons. This wants 516. So this would be two journeys for me. Now it does say, if you look at the little icon, there's a little blue, three blue dots, and that says team mission. So ideally, you're supposed to fly there with um, some pilots that you know, and then if you've all got big holds, you can do it in one trip. But that's just two trips. So that is quite tempting to walk away with almost 12 million credits. But it wants cryolite. Now, the thing about these missions is it never tells you where the where, where the, the resource you need to find it, where it is. So this mission says source 516 cryolite from a suitable market. It's going to cost you about 6.2 million. That's okay. Generally, on these missions, you make... Um, Oh, 
while um, it's, it's showing you that basically you, you, you have to if you're going to make 18 million credits you'll end up spending 9 million but I can find out um, exactly where I can get cryolite from uh, and I do that by going to websites so To find out where, if there's a ship I want to buy, or a particular uh, upgrade to my ship I want to buy, or if there's a, a commodity that I want to buy, I can come here. Now this is um, inara.cz, and it lists everything. It's a huge database. So if I wanted to find cryolite, um, I need to be, you put in your, De your station you're at the moment, which for me is, or the, the system I'm in, which is BD223573. I need to make sure that I've highlighted I need a large landing pad because I'm in the um, Anaconda. But apart from that, everything else is fine. So I click on search, and the nearest cryolite for me is at Ashford Mineralogic Station not too far away then I've got Thornycroft Point, Newman Horizons, Baxter Base etc so I can look there, supply, need to make sure I've got enough so Thornycroft Point has only got 196, there's not enough there if I went to buy from that station they would not have enough for me to complete the mission um, Newman Horizons looks quite good it's got 7,000, nearly 800 um, so I can I can fly to these places. So I don't really want to fly to any of those, but it's a very good way to find out. So let me go back to the game, and we will have a look for something else to deliver. Nine hundred thirty-six. I mean, this one here, twenty-four units of Bertrandite for two million. I mean, that's a really low number of units for quite a decent payout. Let's have a look. It's probably going to cost me about... Oh, it's going to cost me 451000 So that would be 1.5 million profit on top. So Bertrandite. So I go back to Inara.cz. I want to find Bertrandite. Why isn't it coming up? Oh, it's Bet. B E R T. Bertrandite. So I look for Bertrandite. Search. I'm hoping it's Malerba Orbital. Good. So it's telling me that they've got um, Bertrandite at Malerba, Malerba Orbital. And I think, okay, that's not bad. That's one jump away, basically, for me. I can click on the location for clipboard. I can go back to the game. Um, I'm going to accept the mission. So I'm already on accept the mission in the bottom right corner. Just 24 units of Bertrandite. So that's what we're going to set ourselves up with first. So sitting in my cockpit of my ship, I need to plot my course. So I'm going to go to my galaxy map. Now the galaxy map is huge. Um, there are all of these dots on the screen look at all of these dots in all these sectors they are visitable galaxies and each of those dots is a star system with places in you can visit so um, it's a huge huge universe so there's two ways I can find Malerba Orbital I can either put what I've just clipped from um, the website into here and then find it and it says there you go there's a notch a notch a day that's the star system or 
I could uh, go via my bookmarks because I go to Malerba Orbital quite a lot. So I can go to my bookmarks. In fact, if I just go over here and open up the system, so you'll see exactly what is in that system. So this is the star, a notch a day, and we have. Um, if I tell you what these these mean, so any planet, so these are planets. Any planet with a blue ring around it means you can land on it. Any planet with a blue ring and some skyscrapers on it tells you that not only can you land on it, there are actual settlements that you can land on. So you can land on those settlements. These ones, these sort of A letter A shaped things, these wedge shapes, these are fleet carriers. They're capital ships that people have bought. Um, you can refuel, get repairs, buy stuff at them, but they're, they're big. They cost over a billion credits for you to get one of those. Um, this is a space platform. That's a space platform, and this is a space station. It's showing me that it's a bookmark, and it's where I want to go anyway, so I'm going to just hold my thing, and it plots a route to Malerba Orbital. If I go to my navigation screen, it tells me it's one jump. Um, I can change... I've got a really big jump distance in this ship. I can choose to either go the fastest route or I can choose to go the most economical route. So it doesn't use any fuel. Um, when you fly, there's two things you really need to remember to do. One is always fit a fuel scoop to your ship because you hyperspace into as the center of the star system which has got a star and you can use the fuel scoop to use the energy of the star to recharge your fuel so that's very important it helps you to not run out of fuel the other thing you need to do is a saying uh, in elite the, the number one golden rule in elite is never fly without rebuy rebuy is how much money it's going to cost you to replace your ship should you blow it up um, on the screen here in the center column at the bottom underneath all those ranks You've got my balance, my money, and then you've got rebuy cost. So it will cost me 9.2 million credits to buy a brand new Anaconda, should I get it blown up or crash it, for it to have everything it's got on it at the moment. All the same level of equipment that I've upgraded to will cost me 9.2 million. So you run a real risk if you don't have that money in your balance when you're flying, um, because if you have any problems, you won't be able to buy the ship you had. You'd have to start from scratch, basically unless you have other ships stored. So always fly, but never fly without rebuy. Always fly with rebuy. Anyway, so here's navigation screen. It says um, we are going to have one jump. So there's only one thing left to do, really, and that is we go. So I click on that. It'll put us in position, and you'll see the space station we're inside. Now I'm on auto launch. My auto launch computer, my auto docking computer, the Anaconda is such a big ship compared to the size of the slot I've got to get out. It always dings me. It always dings me. So ships are coming in. We're in a queue waiting to go out. I'm kind of hoping it's not going to screw it up today. It won't blow me up, it'll just temporarily lessen my shields. But everything looks okay. And once we clear the slot... Good, that was right. So there's a couple of ships out there looking to come in. We're going to move out of their way. Now in the centre of the bottom of my screen you've got the radar. Which tells me what's going on around me. I won't sort of explain too much about that. But sufficiently, those lines, if lines are going up, whatever is attached to it. If it's green, it's friendly. If it's yellow, don't, uh, if it's white, don't know. Um, it's neutral. If it's if it's got a line going up, it means it's above you. If the line's going down, it's below you. And obviously, the map shows it's behind me. Um, to the left of that, I've got a little globe at the bottom in the middle. This is my um, alignment computer, basically. So I'm perfectly aligned with where I need to go. At the speed I'm travelling now, it will take over a year to get there. So I need to engage what's called frame shift drive. There's three speeds of flying. There's normal flying, which is what I'm doing now, very slow. 
you have Super Cruise, and you have Hyperspace. So now we're in Hyperspace. All stars flashing by as you normally see in Hyperspace. When we get at the end of this jump, we'll be in the system we need to get to the station we need, and we will be in Super Cruise. So we're just going to fly away from that star. A little bit of fuel skipping. We line up with where we want to go, which is Malerba Orbital. It's in the middle of that ring. And we're travelling out Super Cruise. That timer under Malerba Orbital, you've got time in distance and time in seconds. When you're travelling to space stations, you use time in seconds. And when that gets to seven or six seconds, I need to power down my throttle to half power. Otherwise, I'll fly straight past it. So there we go. Throttle down to half power. Throttle is to the right of the radar. And you want to keep it around six or seven seconds. If it's less than five seconds, the chance are you can just fly straight past. And you've got to do the loop of shame where you then go past it, turn around and fly back. It's not getting a little bit laggy now, don't know why, but we're gonna press with it. So just need to stay on course, keeping it between six and seven seconds towards Malerba Orbital. And then when we get to, it tells me in the bottom left corner, less than one megameter. So at the moment it's on light seconds. When it drops to under 0.00 light seconds, it'll change to megameters. There we go. And then when we get to what it wants, which is less than one megameter, we can drop out Super Cruise and then initiate docking with the space station. So we're nearly there. Three megameters. Keep the throttle balanced. Keep it near the seven. One megameter. Drop out. Push the button, you get the prompt, and then the space station appears in front. Now I've got to ask it to dock. So I go over to my contacts. I've only got one, which is below the orbital. Looking over to the right of my screen is my distance. Once I'm under 7.5 kilometers, I ask for docking. So I'll do that now. I've got docking request approved. Because I've got auto docking computer, I need to kill my engines and let the computer take over for me. So it's now going to dock me and then bash me into the mail slot as I go through. This is it from the outside. One thing that I really, really, well, there's a few things I really, really like about Elite. Uh, the first one is the sound design. The sound design is superb. The engines sound amazing. The other thing I like, and it's something really that Star Citizen could do, is the docking is very informative so it's telling me that I need to go to landing pad 39 when you dock in Star Citizen it doesn't give you a, a number to look at you've got a little symbol which you might miss or misinterpret it's gonna dig me isn't it oh no it didn't so here we are inside the station it finds my landing pad and it's going to plonk me down. And we're getting a bit jittery, which is annoying. But again, we're going to stick with it. So, there we are. So we've docked at Malova Orbital. I refuel. Go to Starport Services. That is really annoying. Go to Starport Services, off to the um, commodities market. And I needed Bertrandite. There it is. So we'll select Bertrandite. I need 24 units. There we go. 24 units. We'll buy those. That's enough to complete the mission. And it costs us less as well. It's under the galactic average price. That's good. So now... I need to plot my course back to where I came from, which was Bone Terminal. One jump back. It's not always the same jumps there or back. Depends on where things are in orbit. So, I've refueled. We've got what we need to get. Let's head back and make 
just about a million credits in profit. Let's engines up. Get our destination in sight. And once we've moved far enough away from the station, indicated by the mass locked notification at the bottom right corner of my screen. Then we can go into hyperspace, so there we go. So the flying bit in Star Citizen can take a while, can take you several minutes to get from one place to another. In Elite, every jump is, well, about 15 seconds. Sometimes you need more than one jump, but each jump is about 15 seconds. So it's short, sharp, bits of flight. Very quick, very immediate. So again, I've got to look at my timer. When it gets to between seven and six, I kill my throttles to half. I've got no notifications to say that anybody's going to try and shoot me and steal my cargo, which is good. behind the planet we're looking at, because it's gone dotted. So I just need to clear it. When the destination is dotted line, it means it's behind something, it's obstructed. When it's unbroken like it is at the moment, it means it's in direct sight. At the moment we've got gravitational pull from the planet we're going around, so that's slowing me down. But it's not a problem. Oh. My cat is back. Right, now we've cleared the gravitational pull. Our timer should start to drop quickly. Do the loop of shame. Almost down to one megameter. And then we can drop out of Super Cruise. Hey Matt, don't know if this is working. I've yeah. got it set up. Uh, I can hear you okay. I can't. Let me just. Can you hear me? Yes, can. Hi, how you doing? I'm just I... going to. Oh, give me a second. Okay. I just want to say you know that. What we're seeing in the video is you just taking off from the previous station, but you're obviously talking like you're talking at the next one already. Yes, um, yeah, it seems to be suffering a little bit, isn't it? It's, yes, it's um, about, that's about two minutes behind you, I think, from the oh, video from what you're talking about. Well, I'm just about to land, so um, after I've landed and get everything out, I'll be going on foot for the next bit. But uh, yeah, start, I don't know why it starts lagging, to be honest. It's weird, because this PC definitely can handle it. But it is what it is. Oh, oh, it's it's that's lovely. Hands above the duvet. <laughs> Right, so, time to land, time to land, live stream is just a little bit behind where we are, but that's okay, that's okay.
can't believe that's the first time in what seems like forever where the auto lands and auto launch hasn't just knocked like a wing mirror off my ship. Let's go into the landing bay, into the hangar, because we're going to be going on foot shortly. So while that's doing its thing, we can go to Starport Services and we can get rid of the stuff that we've just brought over. So we'll go over to Mission Depot, sort of return 24 units of Bertrandite, we'll deliver the items, and now I can choose my rewards, 2.1 million credits, that means we made 1.6, 1.7 on that trip. We get a reputation increased as well, and more influence with this faction who gave us the job. So, there we are, a flying delivery mission. Um, so you can do these flying missions without having Odyssey. Uh, you can do them just in the Elite Dangerous. And um, it's very straightforward, very simple. The flying is very easy. Selecting the missions is very easy. So yeah, so that's that. So now we'll move on to something on foot. So we'll get out of the ship. Put my flight stick on the ground. Get my keyboard and mouse. So we'll just do something fairly straightforward and simple that won't get me killed. So with the Odyssey DLC, you basically uh, can now walk outside your ship. You can't walk around inside your ship. You can in Star Citizen, obviously. You can't walk, can't do it in Elite Dangerous. Um, so we go to the lobby at the back. Has a very similar sort of mechanic to Star Citizen on a much smaller scale but as I've mentioned before in previous Star Citizen streams this game is much more straightforward not as complicated so I'm at this lift it says proceed to interact I want to go to the concourse so we get in the lift as you do in Star Citizen all the time and it's going to take me down so Star Citizen when you look at spaceports and stuff you have this huge sprawling city that you can make your way around here you just have a tiny it's like a motorway service station basically but you have these people, and if they have
blue icons above them. It means they can give you a mission if you speak to them. Uh, we have... Oh, there's the... Um, you have these terminals everywhere. And the terminal is where you get your... The, the people that are, are, are mission givers, the ones with the blue above them, or services. So we'll go into the mission board. So it looks exactly the same, but the missions are different now. So as you can see here, we've got some different headings. We've got salvage. If I click on salvage, there'll be missions such as retrieve something from a crash site. Now, retrieve something from a crash site is um, you fly to a planet, you find a crashed spaceship, you um, get off your ship, you land it, you get off your ship, you go over to it. There will be people there to kill who are investigating the crash site. You need to kill the people and then you need to collect something from the crash wreckage and then get in your ship and head back. Um, monetary rewards aren't huge. I mean, 175,000, that's all right. I can earn, as we just saw, I can earn um, 10 times that just by doing a quick one jump, return, fetch and carry mission. But they're quite interesting. Um, I'm not gonna look at this at the moment because this is the one which is gonna get me killed and also, if it gets me killed, it's going to get me um, a wanted. Um, a wanted. That's okay. You're not far behind me now. Actually, if you're if you're landing at Bohm, you're not far behind me. If you're landing at Bohm, you're not far behind me now. So. Um, okay, must be, must be uh, catching, catching up, up then. then. <laughs> Hopefully, a bit of fast forward. But I'm just inside the. Um, I'm inside the the space station on foot. Looking at the mission board, so you, you'll be up in a minute. Okay. Um, so I'm going to look at transportation. I tend just to like simple things. Now, the whole point of me playing these games, um, as I've put in the, the channel trailer, because I usually do a lot of sim racing stuff, and I get really, really not stressed, but I get really um, overly nervous um, on the sim racing stuff. Hi, Mel. I can see you in Discord. That's good. Um, I get overly stressed at sim racing. The idea is you shouldn't play games that make you stressed. So I, I play the space games for relaxation. So I like to do simple missions that relax me. At the moment, I haven't really got enough practice or experience in doing a lot of the shooting killing missions. But these ones are easy. Um, secure a package, we'll definitely do that. What else have we got? Take a package, we'll do that one as well. So have we got anybody else? No, they're on different planets. Now, the thing about these quick missions is um, it's a good idea. No audio at all, really, Mill? Um, oh no, retracted. Okay. It's, it's a good idea if you're just doing these missions where you're going somewhere to take something or you're going to go somewhere to pick something up, just use a taxi. It's only 100 credits if you're staying within the system that you're based. So it really is just getting in a taxi, go to somewhere. Each journey is 100 credits. It's a lot easier. And these also don't provide a lot of um, financial reward 50,000, 70,000, but they're simple and it's a nice little way for me to show you the on foot stuff for here. So we'll do this one. We'll accept that. Looking at the view, I've been there before, that's fine. And Secure a package from Nayla Maya, and also, how much is each one? That's 58,000, it's only a little bit more. We will do that one as well. So we've accepted two missions. We're going to take something to someone, and then pick something up from someone else, and then we come back to here, and then we log in on the mission board, and then we collect our cash. So, two very simple missions, and we're going to use Space Uber to do this. So we're going to go up these stairs. Let me just show you here, because remember, if I'm a star citizen, I mean, it's, it's quite impressive. Here we are in a bar, you can... I don't know if you can do it in a bar, actually. But um, there's the space station. I'm sure you do, Lloyd. But you won't get it from me today. What happens over here? Can we actually do anything here? Oh, you can get drinks and stuff. It's interesting. Okay. Um, other places. If you go onto planets and scan vegetation and wildlife, you can sell them to Vista Genomics over there. If we go over here to Pioneer Supplies, this is the shop where you buy stuff. So if I just walk around the back here, there's different types of spacesuits. Um, I'll have a look in a second, but there's sort of like this one looks like that. There's some guns. These are big rifles. Another type of spacesuit, smaller sidearms, different types of rifles. So if we go and speak to this person, you don't want to be caught unprepared. So there's three types of suit. You have the Dominator suit, 
which is for combat, very good armor, lets you carry a lot of weapons, doesn't let you carry a lot of gizmos. Then you have the Artemis suit, which is quite light on armor, um, but lets you carry a very specific gizmo called the genetic sampler, which allows you to collect data from plants and stuff, which you can then sell to Vista Genomics. Doesn't have a lot of weapon slots, only has two. Then you have the Maverick suit, which is what I'm wearing at the moment. It has uh, two weapon slots. It has a really good gizmo called the Arc Cutter, which allows you to get into locked things, like crash sites and also lockers. If you want to start stealing stuff from a base, you need to open some locked lockers, use the Arc Cutter. Um, that's the suit I'm in at the moment. So my character looks like that at the moment. So you can buy those. I've got one of each of those suits. You can also different weapons. So you've got different types of weapons. You've got thermal and kinetic. So a thermal weapon will help to bring down another player's shields because when you have a, a personal shield in your suit so the kinetic the the thermal weapon will bring down their shield and then if you then change to a kinetic weapon which is like projectile bullets once the shields are down you can then absolutely ping them with kinetic weapons and that should kill them um, but lots of things here so we've got these two different types of handguns we've got this one here which is a pistol so this is like a magnum you can look at the size of it it's a plasma very low fire fr fr rate but very high damage so that's like the magnum um the presser so this is just a plasma rifle Executioner, that's a sniper rifle. Intimidator, looks like a sawn-off shotgun. It's a sawn-off shotgun, basically. So there's lots of different manufacturers and lots of different, and they all go at different space stations. So you can um, re-equip from here. Or you can upgrade your weapons, add your suits, or sell what you don't need. But we don't need to do any of that, because I'm already ready? suited and booted. I will. So we just need to book a taxi. Now we need to do the drop-off mission first. So I'll have a chat with Nelly Freeman. Because I want to go within the system I'm in, I don't want to have to hyperspace, I book a local shuttle. And over here, the ones with the little blue globe on them are pointing to the planets I need to go to. But, easy way to do it is I go to my active missions, I want to take a, pass a package first. So we'll take a package to Lyle Armstrong, that's at Nakayama's view. My booking is confirmed. So, thank you very much. I'm sure you do. Oh, we need to go this way. So I've booked my first taxi from here to Nakayama's view. Again, I go to a lift. I can't go at the moment because there's a little pop-up that says shuttle preparing for departure. So I have to wait. Shuttle is ready. So now I can use the lift. And we're going to go down and we are going to see the adder, which is going to be my taxi. We're probably going to get the same driver for all three trips. So I've got to take a trip to one planet, drop off, trip to another one, pick up, trip back here to collect my money. So this is the adder, Granville Schwartz. So good for carrying cargo and a good space taxi. If you can see the apex on the side. And we need to enter at the front. There we go. So yes, at the moment, the on-foot stuff, again, a lot simpler than um, Star Citizen. But as I've said, the whole game is a lot simpler than Star Citizen. So anyway, we're inside now, and we can just do nothing while Granville flies us to our destination, which will take about two or three minutes. But it does everything in the same way that you would do it if you were travelling yourself. You can use your own ship to get there. Um, I don't know how big landing pads are down there, and it's only 100 credits. And if I accidentally trigger a security alert I'm not going to get a crime stat and my ship impounded so I might as well just spend when you've got 100 million credits you might as well just spend 100 to um, use space uber basically so going to super cruise I don't know why it's turning like that. You don't usually... Oh, you do actually. You can turn the Super Cruise here. Right. So he's very shortly going to line us up with um, where we're going. What's quite interesting here is that you're going to see a planetary landing. So the job I did in my Anaconda was landing at a space station. Very, very straightforward. Come out of light, sp uh, come out of hyperspace, fly towards where you're going. When you get to within a certain distance, come out of Super Cruise, request docking. Excuse me, request docking. If you've got a docking computer, let that do it for you. If you haven't, just dock. This is a planetary landing. Planetary landings are a little different because you use, you start off by using the time countdown. 
he's getting out of the way of the gravitational pull of that star. Then he'll line back up with where we're going. There we go. So when he gets to, again, between seven and six seconds, he'll, he'll power down his, his throttle to half so we don't overshoot. But then he's got to do a manual approach to the base on the planet. So he's got to fly within the gravitational orbit, which is called an orbital cruise. And then you're very, it's like an approach to a, a, an, air, um, an airport. You come in and then you just very gently plot your descent as you're flying and you try and match it with the distance. So you match your speed to scrub off speed the closer you get with the angle you're at. And then when you get close enough, it takes you out of orbital cruise and puts you into a glide. And that's the, usually the last 30 or 40 kilometers. And then again, when you get to the last seven and a half kilometers, that's when you apply for landing permission. So that's how, and there's, there's different dials up here on the screen as well that show you your altitude and what stage you're in, whether you're in orbital cruise or whether you're in a glide. You see how it works. It's, it's quite straightforward. So 20 seconds away from the planet, thereabouts. Well, less than 20 seconds, about five. Now on the screen, we've got these other targets that are saying resource extraction site. Resource extraction site will be an asteroid belt, it will be a planet with a ring around it and the ring of asteroids. The resource extraction site is where you will go to find bounties, to go and kill other ships for money. Um, so you would go, you'll fight to the resource extraction site, it gives you, tells you high, medium or low, based on the density of the asteroids and the activity there. And then once you get there, you just come out of super cruise as you would anywhere else. But then your your radar will be lit up by different, be loads and loads of ships around. Some will be mining the resources, and some will be pirates who are looking to steal from people. Number one rule when you go bounty hunting, don't go with anything in your hold of your ship. Otherwise, they will target you. They'll scan you, target you, and then you're in a dogfight. So you go completely clean. You look on your scanner for the local police, who are always in green. Then you just follow them, and they'll lock onto a baddie who will return fire. You look for the lasers. You then lock onto the baddie who's, in, who's been shot at by the police, fire off some shots to hit them, and then help finish them off, or sit back and wait for somebody else to finish them off, and then when they blow up, you get the bounty. So it's a really, really straightforward way of earning money. Um, sometimes there'll be a wing, so there'll be two or three ships will fly together, all mates. So if one's getting shot at, they'll try and turn fire. So you have to be careful. But if you're shooting them without the police engaging them, you get wanted, so the police will shoot you. So you have to be a bit careful. But here we are, just coming into, we've come out, we're in orbital cruise, we're now going to go out of orbital cruise into glides. We're 60 kilometers away from Nakayama's view. This is going to be a small settlement. When I leave the ship, first thing I've got to do is make sure I put my shield on. Your shield uses energy. You have to every self and recharge by using a battery, a recharging port on wall, or find a battery to steal and just use that. But here we are. So the glider's finished. We're at seven kilometers. Now he's going to um, apply for landing permission. We'll land, get off the ship. First thing we need to do, put our shields on. Then we need to find a terminal. On the terminal, we look up the person that we need to um, give the package to. Then we find them, give them the package. Then we can call the taxi, take us to the next destination, where we do the same thing, except we pick the package up from somebody. So these are really nice, simple missions. So Lyle Armstrong is who we're looking for. When we're taking packages to people, they won't be inside security locked buildings. There are various security levels. We'll go through that there, because we can have a bit of a walk around. But there's tools you can use to clone people's profiles, who work on base, so you can access more restricted things. When you're doing sabotage missions, that's essential. So just about to land. Good. Waiting for the missing buck to get highlighted. Perfect. Let's get outside. So, first thing we do when we get out is to put our shield on. It's going to be cold. Right, shield on. Now we need to find a terminal. We can see in the top left of the screen we have um, a scanner. This helps to show us where things are. I have security clearance zero, which is shown just by my health in the bottom left corner. There's a little zero above it. Here's uh, a guard. Let's go find a guard because they want to scan us. Guards want to scan you. If you haven't got any bounties or anything, it's fine. If you run away from them, you'll be wanted and they'll kill you. Right, so we get that out of the way. I need to find security code zero. So this one is security code zero. There's a zero under the screen, so I can go in here. We need to find... Uh, here's, a, here's a port I can use to... I'll just let her walk off somewhere. No, okay, we'll just recharge my suit, because it's down to 82%, so... Now, if you have anything out in your hands, people will challenge you. The NPCs will challenge you once. If they challenge you a second time, they're going to shoot at you, and you'll be wanted, and then everybody in the base comes to you, and they kill you, basically. So we need to find Lyle Armstrong. So we walk into the terminal. We have staff list, facility, and mission board. You can get missions from here, but we need to go to staff list, and we need Lyle Armstrong. They're listed by alphabetical by first name, so we need to go into Lyle. Who he is? He's zero. He's a pilot. He's going to be outside somewhere, I think. So we will select him. So he's highlighted on our map. He's 46 meters away. Apparently, I can see it already at the top. Little person's appeared. Some missions will want you to go and find a specific container or go and do something in a specific part of the complex. You can find that from facility. So 
here, for example, if I'm looking for locker 28, I go to the cabin on the right hand side there. I could click on locker 28. It'll then highlight that. Tell me where to get to it. But it says there requires authorization two. So that building means I will need a security clearance of two or higher to get into it. So to do that, I would need to find somebody with a higher security clearance than me and then clone their profile, which is really tricky to do because I need to hold my profile cloning, uh, cloning gadget. And if they see me doing it, I'm in danger of being wanted and killed. So you've, you've got to be really careful. Lots of stealth involved in this. Anyway, we need to find Lyle. He's 46 metres away. He's going to be standing around not doing anything. See here, when I'm, when I'm standing and I'm walking, it makes a noise. If I crouch, it makes less noise. So that's, you tend to do a lot of devious stuff crouched to not draw attention to yourself. Where is... He's 54 metres that way. Okay. We'll boost over the top of this building. A lot easier. Oh, he's inside the building. That's great. So I need to get in there. Perhaps he was already inside the building I was just in. That'd be awkward. Oh, I've already been scanned once, dude. Thank you, Cockney. Hello, I'm a Cockney. Let's, um, oh, the pilot's just literally... Well, it was a minute ago. Let's refill my suit again, so we don't... As soon as you finish with something, go put it away quickly. Oh, over there! So here's Lyle. This is, where, this is where the game is going to get really derpy. There we go, talk. I have a package for you. Look at that, the spaceman older than I am. So that one's, that one's done. We're not going to leave the settlement. Don't forget, we need to... Um, we need to book a taxi. Now over here... You know where you're not allowed to go. See, what's he? He is level three. And that's outside that door. I imagine it'll be a restricted zone for a lot of people. Just follow him for a bit. I don't want to be seen to try and clone him. I don't want to try and clone him. I just want to complete these missions. Can we leave the box? No. Now, if I... See, these lockers have got um, keypads. This one's got a lock on it, which I could cut with my cutter. As long as I don't get seen. But again, I don't want to run the risk of screwing up my mission. Anyway... Again, again, just top up the suit. Thank you. Let's call up my little menu. I need to book a new flight. Local booking is still in the system. We've done Kyle, uh, Lyle rather. We need to get Cena. Okay. So now we go outside, wait for the shuttle to arrive. So they're quite big bases, lots of people walking around. Where is the spaceship coming from? Come on, where is it? Okay, it is 700 metres over there. Here it comes. Should be landing in front of me or thereabouts. Will it be Grandal again? It is Granville. So again, we'll stop just temporarily here because the blue thing also be charged with shield. So we'll just turn my shield off, otherwise it will use a battery. And now he's going to fly us off to the next point where we're going to collect a package. Anyway, taking off from here, you take off, then you tilt yourself back. So you get a good escape angle from the planet. He's coming out of the escape vector, so he's going into Super Cruise. As long as he points at the escape vector, we'll leave the planet's gravitational pull. And then it's just a case of pointing it over to where we're going. So 
So again, it's all been done automatically. Nothing for me to do except just sit here and wait. This will take about two or three minutes. So you can see on the, the screen, we're coming up, we're still in the orbital cruise range. Okay, we're going to come out of orbital cruise. There we go, so now we're back in normal super cruise mode. And there goes the distance, oh, the, the timer. Again, get it down to seven seconds. Another thing I like about the uh, is it has a real-time clock to where you're placed in the top right of the screen, so you can keep an eye on the plane. The screen stuttering is very annoying. Nearly there. Yeah, the stream's been um, recording, so the stream. So what I'll do is I'll once it's all finished, I'll kill the most of the recording. That'll be the easiest thing. So as you can see, everything's happened live for things cross. That hasn't been missed either. So another country landing. That is really frustrating. Oh, I'm out of life. I'm so frustrating to watch and to watch it. Sorry, often. This is quite a trip, isn't it? The longest trip I know of on Super Cruise, because you, you make a space into the system's second star, and then you travel into Cruise away from the stars where you're going. The longest time that I know of, so I've experienced, there's a very popular, well-known space station called Hutton Orbital. Now, there's a thing joke with beginner heat players, that if you fly, if you fly Hutton Orbital, you get a free anaconda. Uh, that is a lie, you know, that doesn't happen. There is a special collectible mug that you can get when you go there, it's there anywhere else in the universe. Um, but when you come out of flight speed, the planet takes you to get the Hutton Orbital is one and a half hours. So one and a half hours in Super Cruise. Now, I had a message to say that there's pirates trying to kill me. On the Super Cruise, and I've never done any time that really long, so I sit there for an hour and a half waiting in case I was pulled out of Super Cruise. Because then, um, if not, you go off to do stuff, but if you're not there when you're addicted, then um, they'll just blow your ship up and you've got to do everything. And then I didn't take this all, so I sat for an hour and a half for nothing, basically. Flip it around, grab it, and I was going to crash it. You get those red strike bars when you're landing, you're going to get a red key to the map, you're going to crash. But here we are. I don't know what exit that was, Anvil. That road is close to Cena Hill. That's right, yeah. I think it really worked. Yeah, we'll get back here, get shot to the bone station, back to the ash, and I'll do it. And we'll have to listen to the phone, I'll use the walking, and I'll play the sound of the series, which is the target. Excellent, it's from Tizzy, and it's got prestige. So, it's a mark, and don't forget to put your shields on. That's critical. Alright, I'll take the temperatures. Alright, let's um, get to the tunnel. You can find the tunnel, obviously, in a building with zero shields. That's the bunk, down there. There's a sunder, that's what's happening first. Yep, fine. Here we are. Finish. They have signs, so I'm going to send them to the person's. Seen the tail, so you're all over the one. She's zero. Uh, she's 100 meters away. Is that what's on that? That's it. Because I don't know what I'm saying, it's 35 meters, it's Is that her? I think it's a seen the tail. Seen the tail. Yes, you can. Done. Okay, everyone's sending the things to you. That's okay, we're going to go to the bone station. Okay, we're going to go to the bone station. Actually, Okay, good. Is there a power supply? It's behind there, it's yellow, so I think you can use it. I do have a battery in my back. The pad zones, let's say, they're all screwed That's one, can't go in there. Is it coming what? There it is. He stops there, there's no okay. But honestly, if I just run them, they'd have started shooting at me. Yeah, it was legal, that's me, it's legal. Oh shit. Oh shit. Now we're going back to Bone Tunnel. Mm -hmm. 
So we have this backbone terminal, let's see how we're going to put down money for and then um, we'll have basically. Well, we have no idea why this, um, it's not going to buy 55% on the um, CPU usage, so it's going to stress. I'm going to be a bit extra problems because um, cross animations, flashing, things like that, always make your one fussy week, it's harder to trust it, basically. I think it's just quality, so no problem with that. So while we're fighting, it might as well be easier to just recap. So we have a chip passage, which can do if you're doing the electricity, obviously, if you're doing the electricity, you can just like, if you're doing the electricity, live, and the electricity, live, drop the electricity, it's all fine, but with stuff, and it's happening on the live version, and the legacy is just the um, sort of off-walls, you know, it's still going to be just fine, but you'll if all this happens, you know how to profile, so you have to fall and one full life, you can do one with. Um, but anyway, to find yourself, that's another thing to do, because there's a big deal there. Uh, I'm sure it's true, 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 I'm sure the NFT has sent to the agency of 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 the agency so not a lot of money again we made 10 times that in just one there and back flight with the anaconda so you can make really serious money with stuff and um, just build different sites like for things. I'll go back to another. Let's get all done. Another call done. There's a big cost of the other. This could take hours to sort of that money there. It's called Peter. But anyway, don't be efficient. How should we cost with that? I'm going to do it. 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 I'm and um, so, 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 um, so